My name is Jan Polson and I am a lung cancer survivor. I was diagnosed in 2007 with stage 3 lung cancer and I was curious because I wasn't a smoker. I, I had had bronchitis and I had a cough that just wouldn't go away. So I went to my doctor and sh they took a chest x-ray and said no it's not pneumonia and sent me on my way. Well it just wouldn't go away and I just didn't feel right and I kept going back and getting more tests and finally she said let's just get a CT scan and see what's going on with you. And that CT scan showed that I had a tumor in my lung, a mass. So she set up an appointment with a pulmonologist who then um, did a biopsy and called me and said, you have lung cancer and it's not operable. And I said, so what's my prognosis? And he said, I would say four months. And I thought, well, what do I do now? Do I, do I plan my funeral? Do I plan my, make a short bucket list? I don't know what to do. So interestingly, I sat down and watched TV because I didn't know what else to do with myself. And it was American Idol was on. And Jordan Sparks was singing a song that day that it was called This Is My Now. And I thought, okay, this is my now. I can either sit here and feel sorry for myself or I can fight. And I decided I would fight. So we started investigating and talk, heard about radon. And we didn't know anything about radon. So we started looking into our real estate records. We had bought our house in 1992 and it's at the mouth of Little Cottonwood Canyon which is right at the foothills and um, they had done a radon test unbeknownst to us in the real estate transaction and the measurement was 2.2 picocuries so obviously they didn't see any need to take action at that time and then we realized that five years before we had done a complete remodel on our basement and dug a walkout basement and added a sunroom and basically changed the structure of our house. And so we thought, well, maybe we better test for radon again. So we did, and it came back at 24.9 picocuries, which is more than six times the action level. So immediately we had called a mitigator and had a certified mitigator and had a mitigation system put in and that brought the level down to 1.7 and so we felt good about that and then we started with what do I do about my lung cancer and uh, so I met with my oncologist and he said he if I had a PET scan and it had not spread that he knew a surgeon that could do it so he um, called the surgeon and the surgeon met with me the next day on his day off and said you'll check into the hospital tomorrow and we'll remove your right lung. He said I don't usually remove a right lung from a 60 year old but you're in really good health otherwise and so I think this would be you will you will get along just fine. And then I had my right lung removed and followed by four months of chemotherapy and five weeks of radiation. Then I was cancer free for the next five years and finally my I had periodic scans, CT scans and PET scans and stuff and they all came back negative and my oncologist said well I think you're in remission. That was great and then um, about a year later I started having symptoms of dementia and I went to my primary care doctor and she said, something's not right with you, let's take a picture of your head. Well, it turned out I had a fist-sized tumor um, on my brain, plus a smaller one in the back of my head. So I went to see a neurologist and he said, well, that tumor is about the size of your fist and it's too large to remove with radiation, so we'll have to do brain surgery. And so they 
then I had another tumor at the back of my head, at the back of my brain, and that one they could do with radiation, which they did about a month later. And then I was good for about six months, and then I went back for a routine MRI, and I had six more tumors in my brain. So I had those removed with the gamma knife. And in the meantime, my oncologist had retired. So I, I knew another oncologist from the Huntsman Cancer Institute. And so I thought I'll get an opinion from him. And he said, well, we have a new drug on the market that just came on. And if you have the right mutation in your tumor, um, that this this drug will cross the blood-brain barrier better than chemo, tra traditional chemotherapy and it will keep cancer cells from reproducing. So can I send your tumor in, and I didn't know they did this, um, to see if you had the right mutation and it turned out I did. So I started on that medication in January of 2015 and I'm still getting routine clean scans. Because we did the remodel in 2002 and I was diagnosed in 2007, it had been about five years, and the, um, if we had done the test in 2002 after our remodel, we probably could have kept my cancer from happening because they told me that my tumor had probably been there about four years. So. Time-wise, that's about what it was. Well, lung cancer, I didn't know too much about it. My father died of lung cancer, and he was only 74, but he was a smoker, so that's, you know, I learned a little bit about lung cancer then, but then when I was diagnosed, I found out more about it. Um, they're anticipating that one in 14 Americans will be diagnosed with lung cancer in their lifetime. It's much more common than one would think. People don't want to talk about it because there's a stigma attached because people think if you, if you have lung cancer, you must have been a smoker, so somehow you deserve it, but you really don't deserve it. You know, life's about choices. We all make choices that are good and bad. You know, you can choose to smoke and you know the risks with heart disease and everything. Um, you can choose to drink too much soda and get diabetes. I mean, there's, you know, it's all about choices. But if you're living in a home that you think is safe and it's not, you don't have a choice. So, test your home for radon.